We'll start with administration. Any questions on the administration? I don't have any questions on that part. I do. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Overtime wages, 4,017, 4,000 something, 5,000 in the budget, and going up to 18. That was a result of consolidation. It's not, it's, it's an increase there, but a decrease somewhere else. We have um, our IT folks uh, in-house that are trained, and we used to take that out of from whatever, if they were a detective, it came out of detectives. If they were in patrol, it came out of patrol, and if it was a lieutenant, it came out of those lines. It's another one of those things where we want to get a better read on what are we actually spending on that, so we consolidate it, and that's the number we use utilizing to cover those costs. When uh, Lieutenant Gaditis gets called and he has to come in on a Sunday to reset the system or, you know, mm -hmm. Officer Jackson drives up yeah. from Havel to do the same thing because Tommy's on vacation. Mm -hmm. So we have, you know, two primaries right now. We're probably going to train up a couple more just so if the system has a problem, we have people that can immediately get to it and get it uh, rectified. Mm -hmm. So if you look at, like, uh, crime control investigation, that, that overtime is down 22.5%. Yes. So, in that, so that's how you... Yeah. I just we just move the numbers around. Yeah. It's not you know it's it's a it's an increase in that line, but not the overall number. Okay. okay. And, any That's other good. questions? I have a question on yep. consultants. Uh, three nine two zero, one forty four to three thousand. Fitness for duty exams. We think we just touched on it a little bit with Mary Louise and her and her topic is. We're finding that we need to every time we have a critical incident. Um, mm -hmm. We had an incident. Uh, year before last where one of our, our officers was shot at. Yeah. Every officer involved, I ordered them to go for a fitness for duty exam. Yeah. It's hard because of who we are trying to admit that you're struggling or having a problem with something. Yeah. So the blanket rule is if there's a critical incident and you're witness or party to it, you're going off to talk to somebody just to make sure you're okay. Mm -hmm and any follow-ups we would provide. So we are just seeing an increase in that uh, because we're trying to be more diligent in protecting our employees, so mm -hmm. that's why that increased. And that's smarter than waiting for somebody to ask for help. They're, they've got an out because they're being told. Again, I'll, I want to give credit where credit is due. This came from the rank and file, putting together that team of people and, and getting got folks to open up yep. to the concept of yep. we're all human and we're all going to have yep. our issues with things and trying to take better care of our people. <clears throat> Anything else under administration? No. Nope. Okay. Crime control and investigations. Any Just questions? right away, regular wages, 12%. Is that contractual? That's all contractual matters. Okay. Uh, and we did add, although Christy can answer me, with the additional SRO being funded by the SAU. I think it's still in there, though. That's still in there. Okay. So that is an ad, yes. Yep. That's an ad. But it's contractual plus the additional person that's carrying a detective's badge in the schools. Okay. I'm good. Any other questions? I got one question on this sure. one. On part time wages, I just know we have the same, you have the same amount as you did last year. But as of this right now, it's zero. Part time wages? For the second line under crime control. Oh, okay. Yeah. What that is, if, if you recall, there's no increase. That was uh, Mr. Mills. We uh, brought him on as a part-time evidence tech, which has oh, been yeah. a great asset okay. to the department. Um, again, he's a retired postmaster who are the most organized people in the world, and that's exactly what you need in an evidence room. So the use of part-time people in certain areas, um, especially with that type of skill set, has been a great benefit to the department. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm in, I, because I'm going to the printed pages, and you guys are working off this I well, you can, I'll try to work on both yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> no I just uh, on uh, 42101 6100 um, you haven't increased the prisoner food no um, quite frankly we uh, our rule of thumb is if we can't get them bailed out of that building within a four-hour period they go west of the county jail <laughs> It's I just it's a, it's a risk management tool. It's the longer, the more time we spend in our lockup, the greater risk we have of being sued for something that could happen. Um, so the sooner we can get them out of our facility, we do. So the word is passed that if you go to jail in Hampton, you'll starve unless you. Get yeah, you're not getting any food from me. <laughs> I think it's been a hundred dollars. It's been a hundred dollars since before I was with this department. It was a hundred dollars, I think, a night. I think that started back in 1985. 
and they used to go up to Garland's to get the stale donuts in the morning for the people who get filled up in the morning. So, if you remember what Garland's was. Oh, yeah. Luxury. Oh, dear. And Any other questions have, on? Wait a minute, because I've got. To, I'm trying to correlate. Yeah, no Where you are? Where's the? Well, if you if you've got oh, a line and you want. Are you in 42102? Yeah, Crime control investigation. Mount, yeah, and mounted. I have a. I think I asked you this two years ago. But you're going to be really, really nice to me this time. And that if wasn't you the last have time. an A to put in um, <clears throat> instead of farrier, you're going to put farrier for me? Really? Because I don't think you're ferrying the horses across the river. So you got me on the I same spot. <laughs> I think we've been. I think she, we've been here before. I met with the deputy. So you're gonna remember find, this, and he said weave it in there. So you're going to find an A for me for next year's budget, okay. right? Okay. Well, well, I, I might have the deputy do the budget next year, so we'll see if he has the same sense of humor. You know, so you're going to watch out. I don't have anything else. All right, traffic control and patrol. I'm good on this one. Any questions? Yep. Training. Training and recruitment. Twenty-five to forty-five. That's the one you were gonna. You noticed I, I highlighted in my report the number of tests yeah. we're running and the different things we're doing. What that necessitates is. Instead of, when I came out of this department, they tested once a year, and there was 600 people would show up. Now, you're lucky if you get 100 people to, you know, to sign up, and you're lucky if you get 70 to show up and actually test. So that means we have to test more frequently, and part of the thing we do is, if you pass it, we have to have practice for the test. We additionally have to have people <coughs> come and do the PT training. So that means I have to have people that are certified by the state to conduct the PT testing. So instead of doing that twice a year, I mean once a year, we're doing that two, maybe three times a year, and then we also bring in people from that other Great Bay test because they tested the same way, the same day we did. So we have to run an additional test. So the things we're having to do to get people in the door that are suitable for our needs has increased. It's just the cost of doing that business is getting more expensive because when you look at us, we're hiring part-time officers. When you look at a city like Manchester or Nashua, mm -hmm. they're hiring full time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're constantly getting mm -hmm. depleted by these people raiding us. Uh, there's not nothing we can do about it. We can't get in the way of somebody going from part time to full that we're constantly having to do this over and over again. So if we have a short year and we just need more bodies, we'll even go to the point of if you fail the PT test within a certain range, we'll bring you back mm -hmm. in a month and let you test again. But I have to have certified people that oversee that. So that's the primary cost, trying to do more advertisement um, and just trying to reach out and get people in the door. I know it's a lot of money, but we did have some success. We had the largest class we've had since 2013, and the good thing is we haven't lost any of them yet. Yeah. Now, we will. Um, I anticipate we're going to have some retirements full-time next year, so hopefully we get to grab some of those folks ourselves. But trust me, I know Rochester PD is down 30 officers right now as we speak. They're going to come knocking because they know the product we produce. They're going to be looking for Hampton part-timers. When they see that on somebody's application, they're working for Hampton, they tend to go to the top of the pot. Um, so we have to be prepared for that, and this is just one of the things we have to do is increase our spending in that area. Any other questions? I'm, no, I'm fine through the end of the budget. It's a very well put together budget, very clear. I don't have any problems or questions. Do you want to talk about support services? I do one question on yep. that. Um, outside agencies, Chief, that you implemented yep. a couple of years ago now to bring in officers when we need to fill the positions from yes. other communities, that is a line item that I think we should be totally reimbursed for by the state of New Hampshire. Just, just my thoughts. Oh, yeah. I'm totally fine with what yeah. you want for a budget on that. But yeah. that is more of a political decision. Yeah. I understand your feelings on it. Just understand when I come up with the approaches we're going to take. I don't look at those things. I look at we have a job to do, right. and we're going to no. do it. And I'll let you folks take care of how that's going to get funded. I have faith in you guys. You guys will get something done with that somehow. Yeah. Um, 
my job is to get it done for you, and you guys give us the support we need by helping us through the budget and process. And you always do. Yep. Appreciate that. And you that. had to spend $45,000 last yes. year. I didn't <laughs> increase that line simply uh, this year. We've, we've gone over the last two years. But I didn't increase it because I'm hoping we've turned a corner uh, with the, the 12 we had. We've maintained them. we got a pretty good crop right now going through. And I want to give it a chance to work because my goal is this. These people that come in and help us, they're great. They're a great mm -hmm. asset and we have to work together. But if I can put more Hampton Green out there, then mm -hmm. I want more Hampton Green yeah. because there are people. We've trained them. Yeah. And that's the goal I go to. So I'm, I'm hoping this is a year we turn the corner. And if we do go over a little, there's always some in, in the other line items that didn't get spent, either the full-time coverage of part-timers or the part-timers themselves. So it's one of those budgets that has to have a little a little room of margin of error in it. But that one, I tight, I kept it tight. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chief. Ra radio maintenance from 20 to 30. That's just a look at where we are with the radio systems. One of the things, um, which one, Jim, what line are you talking about? Uh, da, da, da. 42105, Okay, yeah. What we did there is we're trying to get into a habit like we, uh, you know, I've described with the cruisers. When we trade in a cruiser every third year that's a frontline patrol cruiser, we also get a new computer with it. Um. Obsolescence of technology, okay? <laughs> Some of the radios we carry today that are, are issued, if they go down, they can't be replaced. They can't be replaced with the same model, and they can't be worked on anymore because they don't have the bench equipment to work on that model. They're that old. So, in order to stay ahead of that, I built into the budget that we're going to try to purchase six new radios every year to cover that obsolescence that we're experiencing with radios. Because when they go down, they're down, and I have to go buy a new one anyhow. So, if I build it into the budget, as those things go down, we just go into the shelf. We don't have to wait for it to be delivered. And the officers made, we can do it that night. And if a radio dies that night, a lieutenant can walk into that room, take the serial number down, put it in there that's assigned to the officer, and the officer's up and running again in 10 minutes. So that's the goal. Okay. Thanks. I'm fine with everything else. Police station and buildings? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're all set for police budget. Animal control. Do our motion or? No, we'll do it. We'll, we'll do it like we did the the fire yeah, one. Fire. And do it the, the next time. Um, <coughs> if 